Greetings to everyone. We are back to continue with our lectures on the political history of Ghana. And today we are going to look at nationalism in West Africa. Nationalism in West Africa. First of all, I would want to admit that the concept of nationalism has been explained by different kinds of scholars with different academic backgrounds. Political scientists, sociologists, psychologists and historians have all attempted to explain the concept of nationalism. This has therefore rendered the meaning of nationalism very subjective. But for the purpose of our studies, I would explain nationalism from the perspective of a professor of history called Professor Hans Kahn. Professor Hans Kahn explained nationalism as the state of the mind in which the supreme loyalty of the individual is towards the nation state. This simply means that as citizens, we should condition our mindset that we put the progress of our country first, thus above all other considerations. Now, from West African perspective and within the historical context in which we are looking at nationalism in West Africa, we would want to explain nationalism as conscious struggle or resistance against colonial rule with the basic intention of establishing self-rule. I repeat, within the West African perspective and from the historical perspective that we are looking at nationalism, we would want to explain nationalism as the conscious struggle or resistance against colonial rule with the primary intention of establishing self-rule. So in simple terms, all the fight against colonial rule in Africa, in whichever form the fight took place, is called nationalism. Now, within the context that we are looking at nationalism, we have decided to categorize or group nationalism into two. We have the proto-nationalism, which is also called pre-Second World War nationalism. And then we also have post-Second World War nationalism, which has been called by different names. They, some call it mass nationalism, others call it radical nationalism, and others call it militant nationalism. But for today, we are going to introduce ourselves to proto-nationalism. So first of all, what is proto-nationalism? Proto-nationalism is that type of nationalism that emerged before the Second World War, whereby the nationalists involved in the fight against colonial rule adopted constitutional and legal methods to demand for the inclusion of West African educated elites and other West Africans or Africans in colonial rule. I repeat, proto-nationalism is the type of nationalism that emerged before the Second World War, whereby the nationalists involved in the fight against colonial rule adopted both constitutional and legal means to demand for constitutional and political reforms. Thus, unlike the mass nationalism, the proto-nationalists did not demand for immediate overthrow of colonial rule, but they rather demanded for certain reforms. And by demanding for certain reforms, they wanted the colonial government, the colonial government to do certain things for them. They wanted the colonial government to allow the inclusion of West African intelligentsia and perhaps the chiefs in the legislative and executive councils. That is, in those days during colonial rule in West Africa and for that matter Ghana, the British colonial government used two main institutions to govern the country. That is the legislative council and the executive council. But West Africans 
and for that matter, the educated elite were excluded from these two important institutions that were established by the colonial government to govern. So they therefore fought colonial masters to ensure that Africans were included in these two councils called the legislative and the executive councils. Today you call them the legislative organ of government and the executive organ of government. What other political reform did they demand? They demanded for the introduction of franchise. In fact, the colonial government until 1946 constitution, that is Alambar's constitution in Ghana, largely appointed most of the legislative members. But those who fought against, the nationalists who fought against colonial rule, rather demanded that elections should be conducted to elect members into the legislative council. That is what we mean by the adopted constitutional and legal means to fight for the for franchise. And then lastly, they also fought for the Africanization of the civil service. The civil service was too Europeanized. That is, Africans were not appointed onto the top positions of the civil service, but they also demanded that Africans sh should be appointed to work in the civil service. That is what we mean by they demanded for the Africanization of the civil service. So we also talked about the fact that they used constitutional and legal means. That is what methods did they use to fight colonial rule? As, intellect, as intellectuals, instead of organizing demonstrations and hitting the ground, causing violence here and there, they did not do that. They rather wrote articles to condemn colonial rule. That is, they published articles to condemn colonial rule. So publication of articles is therefore seen as one of the methods or means they adopted to fight colonial rule. What again did they do? They sent delegation to the British colonial government to go and argue their case on behalf of the people of the Gold Coast. You remember Aborigines Rights Protection Society sent a delegation to UK to go and protest the introduction of the Lands Bill of 1897. So did National Congress of British West Africa sent delegation or deputation to the British colonial government to go and discuss their issues or issues affecting them. So we are again saying that another method or legal means they adopted was sending of delegations to the British colonial government in UK to discuss their problems or to deliberate on issues affecting them. They also organized symposia, they organized public lectures, and they organized what? Seminars to explain to both the colonial government and the people of the Gold Coast and West Africa, that is in other countries, issues affecting them. So in summary, we are saying that they published articles as a way of fighting colonial rule. They organized symposia, lectures, and seminars, and they also sent delegation to the British colonial government to speak for them. So if you are asked to itemize or list a number of methods that the proto-nationalists adopted to fight colonial rule, you can talk about publication of articles, holding of symposia, organizing lectures, organizing seminars, as well as sending delegations and deputations to speak on their behalf. Examples of proto-nationalist movement, we can talk about Fanti Confederation or Fanti Confederacy as one of the examples of proto-nationalist movement. We can also talk about Aborigines Rights Protection Society. Another proto-nationalist movement that was formed and was very effective was the National Congress of British West Africa. We can also talk about West African Youth League and West African Students Union. Thank you. We will continue with the lecture next week, looking at factors 
that led to the formation of proto-nationalist movement or that led to struggle against colonial rule before the Second World War. Until then, I would appeal to all members to like, share, and comment. Shout out.